Hey everybody, G.I. Joe here. Welcome back to the Bunkers here in Atlanta, Georgia. And we have a special, special video for you this evening. Uh, we have a great guest. We have a gentleman here joining us. You probably know him. Gargantua. I like to call him, or actually, I just made up these names. The, uh, the Canadian Crusher. The Beast of B.C. None other than Gargantua himself. So uh, great to have you here, Gargantua. Thanks for joining us today. Pleasure, man. Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for sending it up, buddy. Yeah, man. So uh, we're going to talk about a move here. I know I kind of mentioned this on a previous video, but um, not really strategy. It's more of a tactic or a move, I guess you could say. But um, it's one that I have kind of dubbed the Greasy Garg. I hope you're okay with that, Gargantua. But uh, I'm good. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Um, we were playing two years ago, you know, in the tournament, uh, BB, BB2, back in L.A., and I'm playing Japan, and we're getting ready. You know, America's breathing down my neck, and uh, we're trying to solve a problem. And you're like, hey, man, try this. And so I did this move, and I'm like, whoa, can we do that? And you're like, yeah, man, it's totally legal. And you explained it to me. And uh, I'll be honest with you, man. I've done it a couple times since then, and it's a totally legal move, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I kind of felt dirty doing it. You know, it just, it just feels kind of wrong, even though it's legal. Yeah, but you liked it, Joe. I loved you liked it. it. So, <laughs> yeah, I've done it. I think in two, I've done it twice in tournament play over the last couple of years, and uh, once or twice in just regular play. So it's not something I've done a lot, but man, when I do it, I just felt kind of greasy. So uh, that's why I called it the greasy guard. Kind of going with the whole sneaky Carl, you know, kind of naming a naming a move, I guess you could say. But um, so before we get into the nuts and bolts of this move, this tactic. Um, maybe talk about the uh, the origination of it, like you know where you first saw. Yeah, it. so then I, uh, like many of the guys, I started playing Axis and Allies, obviously with classic, uh, and and really it comes from the concept of a of an air blitz, um, basically where you you sacrifice or risk planes to destroy critical opponent opponent's units, uh, you know, and usually you. You have to select what is it that I'm going to go after. Am I trying to kill ground units? Am I trying to kill transports? Am I trying to prevent the loss of a territory I can't get back? Like these types of things. Um, and it generally, in, in older versions, was pretty cost prohibitive. Like it almost didn't make sense to do it. Um, but in a lot of the more sort of modern, once we hit global, bigger economies, um, cheaper planes, it became much more of a, this is not a bad move, especially considering that with Global 40, logistics has become a major component of the game. Um, and so it's about uh, adding to the, yeah, to basically add, like adding to your repertoire of things that you can do and, and, and chances that you can take and ways to force issues, right? So yeah, it originates basically from, a, from an air blitz and, and a big part of it, you know, people often look at their force like a big blob, like I've got, okay, I've got a hundred battleships and I got all, you know, all this stuff. Um, and you may not be able to defeat that blob as a whole. You cannot defeat their, you know, whatever force they've put together. So then what you try and do is try and isolate elements of the fleet. Like, are you able to fight just surface ships instead of the subs they have for fodder? Or are you able to fight the land separate from the ships or the planes separate from the ships, these types of things. Um, and that's, and that's what this move this is where it originates from. Uh, a lot of battles in the Pacific, a lot of creative maneuvering to save the day at the last minute and a lot of willing to be crazy and and take uh take your lumps and see where you lie so okay cool so you know it, uh, the the rule book is specific in saying that you're not allowed to kamikaze planes which correct basically means you can't if a plane has four moves you can't move out four and just say no i'm just going to take it as a casualty but could you essentially say that this move we're about to show them is essentially uh for all intents and purposes a legal Kamikaze. Yeah, so yeah. the maneuver that we're going to look at here, and I, and I consider it a maneuver, it is uh, the Greasy Guard maneuver, if you want to call it that. It is a legal move because uh, what you're doing is essentially, you, you may have some impossible battles. For example, you may send one sub at, I don't know, 45 naval units. But it is technically possible that that sub could win that battle, although statistically virtually impossible. Um, and because the battle could be won, therefore, you could non-combat a carrier into that zone, and that would allow a plausible landing space for a plane, thereby extending the range of your planes, thereby allowing you to perform attacks that an opponent may not think are plausible. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and let's, let's set the stage here. I'm going to go to my, uh, my camera board. I'm going to pin this up so everybody can see this a little bit better. We'll be kind of smaller cameras here. Uh, let's see here. Let me remove this pin. 
and I'll remove your pin. And all right, so you should be able to see my map here. So um, let's kind of set the stage. This is a kind of a, a possible scenario, um, and there, I think there are a couple things here with this scenario before we kind of teach this move or maneuver. Um, one, I, I don't want people to get hung up on the fact that it has to be these two territories. It doesn't have to be the Philippines. doesn't have to be the Caroline Islands. I, I think the main thing here is that you need to be two sea zones away. It can't be three, and it can't be one. Because if you're one sea zone away, your planes can easily go over land, come back land on the carriers. Am I right? Yep. 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 I mean, if the maneuver is still the same, though, in the sense that we're going to be sending our aircraft to destroy an opponent's ground units. And the, the reality is this, is like, you can have the biggest fleet in the game. Doesn't matter, biggest fleet in the world, a hundred battleships. But if you don't have a single guy that can take a territory on a transport, yeah. you can't do anything. You just float around. And so the idea behind this maneuver is to basically gamble or sacrifice a, a certain amount of planes to destroy an opponent's ground infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, and typically if Japan's able to do that to the United States, uh, it's crippling because it'll take the United States turns to recover. And a lot of us, are in the good practice of not leaving our men sitting on a transport because in a sense they're vulnerable if the fleet was attacked the guys would die in a transport so most people unconsciously land their guys on the ground which is normally that's the correct procedure but when you go and you land eight ten guys on the ground and i'm able to reach it with six to eight planes and destroy all those guys uh and now you can't do anything for the next two turns especially in a bbr format where you know, you only got an eight turn game and America's really only got four turns of attack. If you destroy their entire ability to land, like it, it's game over. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think the reason I'm saying two sea zones away is like as, as Japan, uh, when I play Japan and, and U.S. starts throwing all this metal in the Pacific, I just count transports. How many yeah. transports you have? What can you do to get to Tokyo? Like. If you've got four transports, you can carry eight guys. I'm like, you know, if I've got 12 guys, a couple planes and AAA, I mean, there's no way you're getting Tokyo. I'm not, you know, and, and you can't offshore me. So, um, and I, I think the, if you're two, if you're two sea zones away, you're kind of hiding your intent. If you're right adjacent to them, they know your planes can air blitz over the land. Yeah. But if they're two sea zones away, th that might not even be, crossing their mind as a potential maneuver to destroy their land unit. So, Correct. so let, let, let's look at this uh, again. I don't want anybody to get hung up on, it's gotta be exactly this amount of ships, this amount of planes, exactly this amount of land units. I think the point here is that you're, you're in the face of superior forces. So like right now, Japan, if they attack this naval fleet, you basically have two options. So right here, if you can see this, um, this task marker, right here is basically in the sea zone off of Caroline Islands. So all this Navy is here. You know, I got like seven, six, seven destroyers, subs, three cruisers, battleships, so tons of stuff. Plus this uh, Anzac or Commonwealth Naval. And then these, this task force marker here is actually on the island of uh, the Caroline Islands. So this is what my concern is, these land units and what they can do. So again, don't be, you know, it might be half of this land unit, these land units with half of these planes again that's not the point let's not get hung up on oh no if you'd have moved your plane over here you could have stopped or whatever okay so that's not the point here it, it's uh it's the the general um the basics of this maneuver so i'm gonna let you talk through this if you don't mind i can move some yep. pieces here so we got uh as this stands i have um i have five carriers in the philippines but Theoretically, two of them could be up in Japan. That doesn't really matter based on what you're about to show us. And then I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got 10 planes, essentially. 10 planes could combine between the carriers and on land. And those planes also, well, they have to be two zones of the way. So let's go ahead and talk through this and I'll move some stuff around. Yeah, so say it's, I don't know, maybe Japan six or Japan seven. Uh, it's a very tight BBR game. Um, you know, you guys are basically right at the winning threshold. If you lose one point, it's game over. And right now, barreling down on you is this massive American fleet that, that got you edged. 
you literally have no guys in Japan, so your build will have to be to save Tokyo. You know, you could try and suicide some ships, but he's got enough destroyers that he could wedge his way through one of your fleets, basically, to probably get to Japan. Um, and at the same time, you know, you're exposed at all these oil markers and other resources. Like, you're going to, the game is, could be lost very, very easily. Um, and so what you do is you, you look at your opponent and you're like, okay, how do I defeat this fleet? Well, I can't defeat his ships. Um, yeah, he's got a few subs in there. Uh, if I, if I attacked and I just didn't send a destroyer, you know, that's a few fodders I don't got to worry about, but the reality is I'm going to lose that fleet battle. I can't beat it. So what you do is you look at his, um, his ground forces. Like, okay, he's got maybe 10 guys. Looks to me like I've got six, seven, eight, nine planes, maybe, or a bomber. Yeah. So, you know, it might not be a perfect mix, but if I'm able to destroy all those guys, but say one or kill them all just without an issue, I'm going to be way farther ahead because he's not going to be able to do anything. He's got no follow-up. He can't take any ground. I can pull my Navy out and back somewhere where I'm happy to keep it safe. And America's, you know, left with his pants down in the wind. So the thing to do here is <clears throat> you've got to, you've got to attack the ground. So you fly your planes over and you go one, two, three, basically into the Carolina Islands. Right. But now you've only got one move left. Right. So your, your carriers essentially would have to land in the sea zone with this gigantic fleet. Right. So your opponent's thinking, well, you can't do that. It's illegal. You're not allowed to, to, you know, you've got no landing space for your planes. But what you do is you take that one little sub at the Philippines yep. and you slide it into the sea zone up against this entire massive fleet. And you say, you know what? There's a chance that my sub is going to defeat this fleet, however slim. And because there's a chance that I could defeat it and I could clear, you know, all these ships and all this stuff, then I could non-combat my characters, car carriers into the sea zone. And so I am going to officially commit my carriers to non-combating here so long as my sub wins the battle. Now we all know that that sub's never going to win that fight. Right. Uh, but the point is, it's technically legal. Uh, yes, all of your planes that are going to the islands will die. They will be, you know, but the, the purpose is you don't care if your planes die, if it means you're not losing any points and that you're going to win the game. Uh, or you're even, even if you go spend $80, let's say, um, you do lose eight planes clearing that ground force. Mm -hmm. Well, you just spend 80 bucks at home uh, if, or whatever your income is, 70 maybe, and you build seven more planes. If that's, you know, if you're playing a longer game or a different version. Because like logistically, you're you're setting America back probably two to four turns, depending on you know what other stuff they built and how their queue set up and you know all these transports and logistics they've moved forward. They now have to move back, um, and so it's a very it's a very damning move. And it's it's quite simple. You you just send the one sub, you send all your planes, you kill all these guys, uh, and you laugh all your way to the bank. So so it there. There doesn't have to be any certain order of battle here. Like you don't have to roll the, the naval battle first in order to make the the, the plane theme legal nope. or vice versa. Is that correct? No, nope. correct. Yeah, right. and we're going to show you this, guys, uh, in the rule book here. Or don't don't just take our word for it. Um, as good as gargantuous word is, uh, we're going to show you in in print how this is legal. Um. So yeah, like one thing I've done before. Is I've done exactly what you said. You send in a sub against superior forces. You send in your planes, so you're essentially kamikaze in your planes. Yep. And then I do the exact same thing. I buy seven, eight, however many planes, and then I non-com my navy back to Japan. Yeah. I drop, I drop my planes on it. Now he's got this huge navy. Yeah. Right? He has no land units, and now I'm like, yeah, come and get me. Yeah. Right? Or you drop some transports in there too, and so now I've got the upper hand. Now I've got the transports and the guys, yeah, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And now you're all of a sudden you've got to make some defensive moves to stop me from doing whatever I need to do. Yeah, but um, yeah. And one thing to be conscious of is sometimes your opponent will have other ground units that they've left behind on Palau or Philippines or different different places for whatever reasons. So you just want to be cognizant of whatever that chatter is. Yep. And either, you know, depending if it's like literally turn eight in, in BBR or whatever it is, like you can either leave units behind, like leave a destroyer behind the, the block so they can't be picked up, or you also kill those ground units as well. Um, you, you know, but, but nominally you want to take all their ground units away, cripple their, their ground infrastructure, and they, they literally cannot take anything else from them. Cool. All right. So how about, how about this scenario? Um, we have, uh, 
you know, just for, for the uber creative person here that might say, ah, but you've got your carriers in Japan and you've got to catch a plane. So I'm just going to send my little coalition fleet out here and I'm going to do a little, uh, I'm going to do a little naval blockade to make sure that your little carriers can't even get down there to catch your plane. So I got you. I, I just, uh, you know, I just threw out my, my ace on uh, from the deck. So what are you going to do now? No problem. I'm going to do exactly the same thing because I can do it. And so if you take one of your, whatever, you've got a cruiser or a destroyer at yeah. Philippines, yeah. you just slide it over to the sea zone. And yeah. even though there's a blocked sea zone prior to the, to the Carolines, um, as long as I attack that other one, whether I win or lose doesn't matter because again, I'm creating a plausible path where, well, if I win both of these battles, then my carriers will be able to non combat and I'll, and I'll be able to land on them. Um, and so, you know, even in the sense of someone trying to block it, it, it doesn't work. Yeah. And for those of you that are, that are astute in BVR, this is not the same as a naval block. It is a naval blockade and it does block, it does block three ships from doing a combat move. So if yes. these carriers were going to want to be involved in the actual combat off the yeah. Caribbean islands, then yes, you would have to have three ships there to, uh, to fight the battle. But if you're just going to clear it to non-com later, then, then that's not the case. Well, and even if the guy put three ships there, right, you just attack it with one. Again, it doesn't matter if you win or you lose. It's just that there's technically possible that it could win. So therefore, it's technically possible to make the maneuver happen and the planes have a technically possible landing zone and then you're able to pull it up. Okay, yeah, so I think this is pretty much, uh, from what you've said, pretty self-explanatory here. I guess yep. a couple of questions I have for maybe the viewing audience is, is this a desperation move? Is this like a viable tactic? Or is this like late game desperation? Like you and your out-of-box experience, like have you seen it? Have you seen it a lot? When have you seen it? Uh, it depends on a lot, depends sometimes on the type of opponent you're playing. Uh, and But sometimes it, it depends on, you know, how much damage you're facing, right? So like look, looking at this example, say I went in there with eight planes, I'm going to spend $80 to destroy approximately 30 to $40 of equipment, right? Guys and so on. Uh, and yeah, so that's me losing 40 bucks. Uh, but now America, you know, for every island that they're taking, especially in BBR or different versions, there's a cost. Like if America takes so much as one of those islands in global out of box, you know, that's four to nine dollars per turn, right? And especially like say I don't have transport infrastructure to take it back. Well, if I lose so much as two turns, that's just one territory we're talking about. Um, you, you know, like the the cost speaks for itself. So yeah, you burn eight planes uh, and and you destroy like I say, you know, you're out forty bucks type of thing. But now your islands aren't threatened. You don't have to defend them. You're not exposing transports and other ships and infrastructure. Uh, you're earning revenue while your opponent is not. Uh, you're able to replicate the, sh the planes that you you paid for because you're you're going to make that forty dollars in a turn or two. Uh, and so really, like, it can be a desperation move at times. Uh, but I actually fundamentally don't view it as a desperation move. The amount of effort and cost it takes to buy a transport and buy the guys for it and then move it, you know, to Hawaii and then to Carolines, right? Like there's, there's a significant investment in cost to do that. And if I'm able to spend, you know, $10 or $20 per, you know, two guys and a transport you've sent down, I view that as at the worst economically neutral and at best is economically a gain. Uh, so I, I, you know, I don't, I don't view it as necessarily a desperation maneuver. Um, but you know, it can be depending on, on, you know, where, where I would view it as a desperation maneuver is if, is if your chances are low, like he's got eight guys and you've got four planes or maybe five and you're like, well, I'll just try the best I can do. I don't expect to actually win, but you know, if I can bring his number down then maybe, but you know, if you're able to stump him out, like, I don't, I don't view it as, you know, while you protect your empire, it's like, that's, right. that's the luxury of, of having the economic advantage and, and having control. I'll often trade units like. My math using the Pacific is I'll trade unit for unit if I'm in control of Pacific, right? Like, cause I'll, I'll, I'll burn destroyer for destroyer or plane for plane all day long because I'm the one holding the dollars. What, like, what do I care? We could be here for 10 turns. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I'm going to trade with you all day long. And, and that's, you know, that's a critical thing to consider. Yeah. So like, I mean, I think, I think there's two things here. One, obviously I think the desired result will be annihilation of the entire land force unit. Yeah. Well, like, let's say you're playing something like BBR, and let's say that uh, you got 14 points, right? Yeah. Th this is America's last big hurrah, right? Yeah. Here's where they're going to come save the game and win the game in BBR. 
but even if you um, aren't able to kill all the land units, if you get it down to three, yeah, and they have to take three points away, I mean, yeah. it's like, well, you might get one or two points away, but you're not getting three points away with three land units. So in that yeah. sense, even if you're not 100% successful on destroying the land units, it could still be not necessarily a desperation move, but a game-winning move. Yeah, and it can be crippling. And especially like if you're playing more average or even novice players, like this will take the wind right out of the sails. Like they're just like, I invested everything I had in this maneuver and it's gone, right? And, and guy gets dejected and more often you defeat the man before you defeat the game. Right. So. Okay, I guess the only other thing I'm curious about is obviously this is predicated upon the fact that, you know, the land units are sitting on the land. Correct. So if they're sitting on transports, obviously this move doesn't work. Correct. Uh, that's something that as a Japan player, you're just going to have to see, here they come. You're kind of watching, like when I've done this a couple of times, I watch their movements. If I see yeah. a pattern of they're dropping off on land every time they go to an island, I'm setting them up and drawing them in to do this move. Yeah. Right? If I see that they're keeping them on the ships, now I've got to think about my purchases. Okay, I'm actually going to have to kill this Navy or block yes. it. So now I'm thinking destroyers or subs or whatever, you know, to, for, for fodder or maybe something like that. But would that be a fair assessment or? No, it, it totally is. And, and that's exactly it. You, you wind up and in terms of if, if there's an opportunity there and you see the elements separated, you attack them separately. If you don't have that option, then you're absolutely right. You look at hey, how can I control his flow? How can I take some things away, but maybe draw him into the center, like give him the Philippines, but, you know, block the, uh, the, the Dutch East Indies um, and try and basically go for the whole fleet. And then even the fleet itself, I often, if I can, I try and separate or consider separating out the subs. If he's got three or four subs and I only had one destroyer, I just won't send the destroyer. And now my planes can't physically hit his subs, so he can't use them in the same way as fodder. And, you know, I'll make the attack and, and hope that, you know, that gives me some kind of an advantage, which usually it does because you're registering your, your aircraft hits instead of on um, subs are being registered on surface vessels. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I think, you know, some, sometimes this move also is like, you know, if I do this move, it's going to give me two more rounds. And if I get two yeah. more rounds, I'm able to accomplish these goals. Yeah. So it, it's worth doing that. Well, just so I'm not sure, sure what's going on here. Um, video. Uh, it's a nice fridge, Joe. Hey, man, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man, I'm in my basement here. All right, I want to show people. Uh, let, let, let's deal with our any naysayers we may have out there, right? Um, which I've only got 10 minutes left on here on my free, free little Zoom thing here, but I think we're about done anyway. So yep. like, if you're a BBR player and you head to... Uh, to page 41, okay, if you head to 41, um, you'll look here where it says uh, under air units, let me see if I can do this here, the paragraph, uh, da, 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 where is it at, right here, this paragraph right here, so it'll say, um, hang on, let me move this, not sure, all right. So I think the one, two, the, th the third, fourth paragraph down, it says you cannot deliberately send air units into combat situations that place them out of range. Uh, in combat move phase, prior to rolling, you must be able to demonstrate some possible way, in parentheses, however remote the possibility is <laughs> for your attacking air units to land safely. And I think that goes exactly what you were talking yeah. about. And then it says this could include a combination of combat moves. And I think that kind of goes along with with the uh, you know if Commonwealth or some allied nation wants to block you from getting there, you could you could do some a couple highly unlikely winnable battles, but at least if you engage those battles to where the possibility is there. Uh, if for, for all you, so do you, you want a you want a real twist, Joe? What's that? Like a real mental twist that's sure. going to have you like what? <laughs> so you can. I think actually Global 40 did an FAQ that, that they clarified you can't, but I don't see it in, in, I think it would be plausible in BBR to be able to pull it off. But you can actually, in my opinion, use a planned retreat. So for example, say your, your carriers from uh, Japan were able to hit the Carolines, that's three moves away, right. but you actually needed them, I don't know, a sea zone south of that, uh, you needed them to reach there in order for the planes to actually land. 
-hmm. then as long as they can be another unit basically could have come through uh, or, or like, because when you retreat, you all retreat back to one season. So basically right. there is a way to get a unit to move four spaces um, if you use a retreat. And I would argue, and there may be naysayers for this, depending on the version you play, that you can use a planned retreat to land a carrier. Because I'm going to attack this fleet, yep. I'm going to go for one round, and I'm going to retreat my carriers, and that will allow me to land these things. Now, that's a lot more of a, that's a big question, that's I would really say. That's really breezy. That's really it, breezy. Oh, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> now, I've seen it done before. <laughs> so... So I like and I and I subscribe to it because I'm like, well, I'm planning to retreat and I can tell you. Um, and you'll certainly get some pushback. But when I read the rule book at BBR, it says, however remotely possible, based on the combat movement phase. Mm -hmm. So if I'm able to use a planned retreat to move my carriers for, I don't see anything in the language there that prevents me from attempting that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, a tournament moderator or house rules may say, you know what? that's a that's a little too greasy for a greasy guard yeah <laughs> well, for, those of, for those of you who are out of boxers saying like well yeah maybe bbr but there's no way anything like that would be possible in you know the, per the perfected state of out of box rules yeah well, here's page 28 in the uh, pacific second edition and if you look here a lot of sired's rules that he got uh, every rule in the bbr manual is not new sometimes if, if nothing's been changed he just took the out of box rules and put it in there. And so you'll see right here, um, right here in this paragraph, I think it's what the fourth one down. It's a yeah. same, the same thing where you say, however remote the possibility is, we are attacking units to land safely on that turn. So uh, it, this is not a BBR rule thing. This is um, actually an out of box rule that has just been adopted by BBR. So, well, um, I think that's some great stuff. Gargantua, thank you for taking the time to uh, meet with us and to uh, hopefully clear up or show us this uh, fantastic move, which, um, like I said, I think it's one of those things you keep in your back pocket for when the, the time arises. Uh, like yep. I said, the last two years, I've used it maybe three or four times, but it's always been at the most opportune time, which is usually a time when I want to get my enemy to throw in the towel. And uh, yep. that's usually what happens. Yeah, it's a kill blow, and it, again, it takes the wind of the sails. And and usually, when people see it, they're like, "Okay, that's it." I'm done. Uh, you know, depending on how and how all the factors, right? But you know, and sometimes I've, I've used a maneuver like this, for example, to save uh, London from capture. I had planes, but the guy had ground. I suicided the planes into the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and boom, right? You know, like ah, I lost six planes, but I did lose London. You know, there's things like that you can do. Um, and so, it, yeah, it's, it's definitely a fun maneuver to keep in your back pocket. Well, awesome. Well, uh, I think with that, I think that's a good wrap up. And uh, thanks again for joining us here at Gargantua. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, put them in the chat, uh, you know, comment section down below. Just refrain from the that's totally not a legal move. So just, I mean, don't even waste your breath with that. You might you might agree with this a little greasy and that's okay that's why that's why i'm calling it the greasy garg i'm ho hopefully you're okay with that gargantuan yeah, no, a, a dirty pool is fair game as far as i'm concerned so for real. that's right all right well thanks again for joining us and who knows maybe we'll do some more stuff like this like the whole sub defense of of london maybe that'd be kind of a cool thing to show next week sounds good to me all right thanks guys thanks for joining us thanks gargantua we will see you next time thank you guys